You know how my rallying cry of late has been that we should be using horses to get around the server? I have been rejecting the wings, which is why it's perfectly fine for me to use my horse. Actually, I think you'll agree this was for a noble cause. A wither had gotten loose on the server and ascended thousands of blocks up into the sky, making it a difficult task to take out alone. So a group of us hermits got together to duke out with the wither in the sky. And to be frank, this battle was painful and slow. The technique that I found worked for me was to use my rocket to boost towards the wither. And if I got the timing just right, I could switch to my sword and swipe it and give it a good old hit. And although I'm showing you some successful strikes here, uh, the truth was I didn't contribute much to this fight at all. The Wither's pathfinding was just kind of crazy. It kept moving around, jittering in all different directions and continuously going higher into the sky. We were literally fighting the Wither above the horizon. But eventually we did strike that final blow and it was a long way down to the ground. He's going down, he's going down. Hey! Woo! Nice! nice. GG, GG, Herbert. Oh my day. Let's go. I, I Where are not we? Land. I'm not what's sure up and down? What's up, Just, what's down? I'm confused. If you, oh my, gosh. oh my gosh, we are so high. I've been going straight <laughs> down for like 10 seconds. Oh my <laughs> God, we're so high. This is insane. Oh, it's time for the intro. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. We are in the Never to do a communal service because those of you that are astute and observant will notice that our sheep farm has expanded. And yes, I need to answer the comment that I see over and over again. I do not have the permits to sell all of these wall blocks. I am not actually trying to sell all of them. Just because I don't have the permits for these doesn't mean I can't build a farm. But now that I have the farm where everyone can see, some of the people with the other permits might be enticed to get in contact since I've done all of the hard work for them and now we've got lots of different colored wool. Now in expanding this thing, I realized something about this farm. I think I might have actually already mentioned it, but you can never turn it off because otherwise it might break. And that gets a little bit more painful when you've got tons of these dispensers making a racket because they're always being powered. And you'll see here that we've done a little expansion at the back with the hopper minecart. So we have a chest here and the hopper minecart going below can just scoop items out of it. So we can put bone meal into one spot and it'll deliver it through these hoppers to the dispensers that are in front of them. And actually that's about it. It basically works the same way. And if you happen to have not seen me create this, you can go back and check out 1137 if you want to know how this sheep farm in the nether works. Now this thing's only been running for a few hours, so I can actually only make use of two colours, which is the lime and the grey so far. And as I said, I wanted to do something communal. So in the central area of all of these portals, I've created something temporary but striking. I feel like the smoke and the honey will certainly grab your attention, and then when you head over here, there's a bunch of signs. And what we can do is simply rename and color these. So lime for the end portal, gray for the mesa and the desert. And guess what? Like season seven of Hermitcraft on the roof of the never again, we have some carpets leading to the portals off in the distance. So yeah, here on Hermitcraft, there's always a question, you know, how do I get to this portal? How do I get to that one? This is just the beginning of a system to map the direction to the different portals. And you know what? I'm going to let the other hermits like take all the wool they need if they want to add things to this since this is like for a communal service. So you've seen one wither death this episode. Here's another. I needed myself another beacon. And that was so that we could go mole mining, which is a technique I use. It's helpful to have haste and speed here. Whizzing around underground with a night vision potion and not actually seeking diamonds. I was down there looking for this stuff. Yes, redstone. I am absolutely skin on redstone with all the projects that we've been doing. We got the mob farm and then the sheep farm just soaked up the last of my reserves, but now I've got plenty more. And I mentioned our mob farm with reason because overnight this thing absolutely filled up all of the chests here. But I was kind of hoping it would be a passive source of redstone because, of course, witches can spawn. Although they're very rare, I didn't expect it to be this low. Like, what, five pieces of dust? Yeah, that is an absolute pittance. 
I really like the idea of getting some redstone without having to travel to a far away location to use a farm, but it looks like that's what we might end up doing. Anyways, I think this is enough to get me through a couple of redstone projects we're going to do in this episode. The first of which actually involves our mob farm, because currently this is how I turn it on and off, and this is, is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, a couple of ender pearls, and then i got to go and hit the switch manually. So I want to automate this in a fun way, and we're going to do it with a bow and arrow. And on the receiving end of such arrow will be a target block. But aiming at a distance can be a bit of a headache. Let's try and hit that stone right there. I'm going to aim slightly above it. Uh, that actually appeared to be a good shot. In fact, that was like bang on in the middle. Anyways, I want something larger to aim at. And we've also got a display indicator there for if the thing is on or not, which I realize is actually not too visible from here. And isn't it just Sod's Law that after you finish doing a little bit of a project that you remember some important detail? So if I go ahead and shoot the edge of this block, it puts out a weaker signal. That is a problem because the signal might not reach our T flip-flop, which is this copper bulb. We power it from this block here. So whichever one of these target blocks I hit in the middle, at least, it will create a redstone signal that comes around like that. And then from there, all we need to do is run a signal to the mob farm. So it connects like this. And then to our lamps, which are the other side of these blocks. So when the lamps are on, so is the farm. As for fixing this, I think it can be done with just a few observers. Because these are so close together, it's a bit of a pain to make sure you can get a signal out of all of them. But we'll detect any one of these redstone lines down here getting an update. Same for up the top here, there's redstone behind each of these. And this creates a full strength signal, so we get power from the top, power from the middle, and then down here, power from the bottom, and we just need it to connect to this, and I have a target block. So that'll do the trick. And I've just tested this using the free cam. It does indeed work, which is nice, because how many times when you spot a little problem like that, do you have to start all over again? So now we know that the farm is off, and I plan on making this more interesting, but right now I'm in the mood to do more redstoning. And that will lead us to a familiar site. Of course, we're back at Loglands, and down here we've got a bamboo farm that's still running. This thing is supposed to be unbreakable, but I did actually encounter a situation where a server restart caused one of the pistons to bug out and freeze. It was very strange, but otherwise it has been continuously running. And that means that we have a large amount of auto crafting going on down here. So we're making the blocks of bamboo and we're making bamboo planks. And I've actually expanded this so we have six modules, which is kind of overkill. But when this whole thing backs up, it'll essentially act like a, a big storage for those planks. And then up the top here, if ever we have so much bamboo going around that it doesn't get picked up by these ones, there's now a circle for it to come back around again and have an opportunity to get picked up. So underneath our bamboo planks, I've attached some hoppers to these chests. And for the purpose of what I'm about to show you, let's go ahead and add a few more so it can start sucking the planks that we've already pre-crafted because this is going into another auto-crafting setup. But this one is actually different to the last, although sort of similar. Now, the reason that it's different is because this one has two steps of crafting. But now that we've got the planks sorted out, these ones all just have one step each. And we can put these side by side because the crafters are powered by the block above it which is actually controlled by the latch which locks the thing if your storage is full. So you'll notice that this bit of redstone here is actually powered from three different spots. The crafter at the bottom is just creating a signal strength of eight. The one at the top will turn this to a nine when the crafter here is full. And the one at the back will do the same thing when the storage here fills up. And these are like blocks to just balance the signal. So down the front here, where the more useful items are, the more common ones for building, I've got less stone in here. And this thing is actually about to hit the next signal strength, I think. Oh yeah, it, it just did it. It locked up. So now this hopper isn't going to suck in any more items. There's going to be no more crafting here until I take these items out. Let's go ahead and do that. And it starts crafting some more again. And I made a fatal mistake with the next one. That is not the recipe for stairs. Uh-huh. And here it goes. Right, so now it's going to start filling these up. The one next to it's been doing its job. It's been creating bamboo trap doors. And then after that, it's going to be regular doors. We've got the pressure plates and even buttons. 
And if ever we decided, no, we want even more stuff than this stored here, well, we can put another storage in front and a hopper behind it, but I think that's quite unlikely. So yeah, with this really compact nifty design right here, we've expanded our auto crafting even further. And further still, because I realized that there was more things that we could be crafting here, like bowls, sticks, but most useful chests. But we are done with our redstone today because it's time to turn our attention to what is most likely going to be on the thumbnail of this video. It's a building for a communal project that is going to introduce some custom items and incentivize shopping in the shopping district. All of this will make sense in the near future. Right now though, I think the best way to start this project is to just jump into the building. And so I've spent my time gathering a bunch of resources. Not only this, of course, we also store just tons of different things in the ender chest. I love how useful this is. So what I'm going to create is a shop. And it's kind of interesting because there's a feedback loop for when I make sales. Again, something that will make more sense in a moment. But we are selling custom items related to sales and not anything that's like traditionally in Minecraft. So I felt like this might fit in with the Hermit Permit Office, which is somewhere behind these trees. Aha, I think I spot it over here. There, yeah, this is the spot. I was here earlier clearing out some space because I wanted to put mine next to this one as I felt like it had a similar vibe in terms of being a place more of, let's say, utility for now. And I wanted to build something that would fit in as well. So I've cleared the space. Now let's get a time lapse going. There should be some music. This is going to be fun. I can't wait for y'all to see what I've got in store for you here. So that was fun, but boy oh boy does this game have some issues with inventory management. I mean, look at this. I am organized and the shulker boxes, oh, it's just crazy. But then again, this build does have a lot of detail and it kind of looks amazing from this angle just here, but it is somewhat of a hollow shell. One, because I haven't built the interiors and I'm not actually going to build the back of this shop today. I am gunning to get this episode out before our next hermit craft meeting so that I can then introduce all the hermits to the concept, which apparently relates to sales. I always think it's awesome to track the amount of diamonds that you make through the shopping district each season. And normally that involves writing something down, but this time I'd like to make it visual and include the whole server to participate in these custom models that you can be rewarded for achieving a certain amount of sales. We're going to call them medals or trophies. We, we need to call them trophies. They are on display and I'm going to be selling the rights to use them. I don't think I'm going to charge a crazy amount, but maybe something like 10 or 15 diamonds to sign up. Then you'll get a model like this. And each time you reach a new goal, you get to upgrade it to the next model. Now, so far this season, I've made a total of 74 diamonds from our basic shops. 
But earlier today, I sold out the copper. I got another 59 diamonds, and this puts us over that threshold. So now I could get the 100 diamond trophy and display it in my shop. I think that this would be great for incentivizing sales and competition in the shopping district. And everyone can partake or not partake if they choose to. It doesn't really change anything if you choose to opt in or not. But here's the thing, it is a business, so every time I make a sale over there, it also contributes to my own diamond number. Alright, let's get back over here, because we've got some interiors to build, and like the front, a fair amount of detail has gone into it. So there shall be two rooms. Room number two, not yet constructed. Room number one is like the desk, the place to drop off your diamonds and buy one of these trophies, which is the wrong way around. And this one is for 100 diamond sales. And I'm yet to put information on the sign or a book here, uh, but the room is actually a little bigger. But when I was doing the details, I realized, you know what, I don't actually need that much space. Let's do the last part of this second room together, because I've kind of put in the foundational blocks here. And also I'll use the detach, detach cam just to show you how I'm kind of like nestling in this into the build by filling up some of the empty space with dirt. I like that because then when you need to expand, you can kind of see, ah, dirt blocks, I can just take those out. Anyways, there are three spaces here, a four, a three, and a two. And this is the display room for the trophies. What I've gone and done is kind of like themed each little grouping. The first one is four of them together. And we're going to pair this with gold blocks. So getting a little bit fancy now. Isn't that just looking wonderful? You can definitely like draw your eye to what's going to be on this bench. Okay, this is where we have some grayed out models. Because they're actually color coded. And I kind of want the hermits to anticipate getting the next level. As you know, it starts with red. But it's going to change as we go along. We also want to make these item frames invisible, although actually it kind of like drops them down a little bit. I think it might actually be nicer to have them visible. Let's not get distracted here. The next blocks are copper and not actually this fully oxidized state. I have to take them all the way back, which is the way that this works. And I use copper elsewhere in this build and it is like such a pain to have to do all of this micro... Simo. Oh my god. Lord. God, you scared the life out of me. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. You were oh, just like... I was mid-sentence, like... Man, oh man. Yeah, like right in the middle of everything, and then bam. Oh my god, what's... Hi. <laughs> hey, I Did just it... want to stop by. Uh, I wanted to give you a couple of free samples for the oh. uh, fireworks shop. Lovely. Oh, well, my inventory is so full right now. <laughs> feel free to test those out. Just test them out immediately. Just go for it. See, see if we can make it. Woo! Uh, there we go. Ooh, that's a Christmas one. Bam! Oh, I love it. Ooh, very <laughs> nice. Very good. So yeah... Make sure and visit the Fireworks Shop X if you uh, are so inclined. Ooh, that's a good one. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw it earlier. It looked looking awesome. I, I plan on popping over there later and checking everything out. So uh, I will swing by. Fantastic, man. All right, I'll see you soon. Later. That totally took me out of the moment. I'm out here, you know, far away from anyone. I did not expect to be uh, bamboozled like that. Where were we? We were placing blocks. And I was also saying how the copper was a bit of a pain to work with. I actually really like those mechanics. They just, on a larger scale, they become a little finicky. Look at these. They look really mighty, don't they? Let's go and put them in. Oh, yeah, we've got to rotate them as well. Give them a little turn. Hello, face me. Oh, yeah, and the numbers as well. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So we've got this nice contrasting free-tone thing going on here, although the gold kind of blends in. With the bamboo a fair bit check this out just going to use the the copper here for some greenery and here it is the final two looking absolutely mega on the hot bar there they almost look the same actually they're not they're slightly different i assure you oh look at that Ten thousand diamonds will anyone actually make that many this season of hermitcraft so yeah 100 250 500 and then up to the thousands and then around to ten thousand. I'm not sure that anyone will, but it certainly sets a goal. And here's the thing. If someone does make it to 10,000, well, we can get another trophy and go up to 20,000. And shout out again to Hoffen, who makes many of the custom assets you've seen on the server, doing another incredible job. Believe me, these look like 10 times better when you can see the colors that they have. But I guess we'll have to wait on Hermits reaching these goals to see all of them. 
Now, I did say to Cub that we'd check out his rocket shop, but there's a lot more to talk about in the shopping district, and I think we'll be over there next episode, probably promoting this as well. We need to make Hermits aware of it. But something just struck me. How are we going to structure this? I know now we're going to sell each level 10 diamonds a piece. And what the Hermits will do is send us the 10 diamonds over the mail delivery system. So they can keep on top of like reaching their own goals and then they have to send for me to get a custom model. So around the back here, we could actually install a mailbox and keep up with orders that way, which I think would just be terrific. And if you're like X, what on earth is a mailbox? You need to go check out Tango, Efo, and Pearl. They've been creating an actual legitimate redstone powered mail delivery service for Hermitcraft. Anyways, this brings me to the end of my episode. I hope you liked the concept and the builds. Let me know what you thought it all with a comment down below. But that's going to be it from me this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye bye.